What we will do, I feel, is if we just describe the process of uh, growth in terms of the growth of the soul, and then what we'll do is get to the specific questions relating to reincarnation in terms of you know, why do people have past life experiences and what, why do they remember things and what, what's going on with all of these different things and what it's like to actually be reincarnated compared to what everybody thinks it's like. And we'll talk about some of those comparisons as well. So let's proceed with that, shall we? Now, remember I finished with the thought that soul development is the key thing that determines the location in which you arrive. Right? Now, if your soul is quite developed in love and truth in particular and, and is quite humble, then you will arrive in a higher location than the first <coughs> sphere. But the majority of people on earth arrive in the third, first sphere of the spirit world. And in fact, the majority arrive in the hills of the first sphere of the spirit world. Now, a lot of people don't like hearing that, of course, uh, because then they worry about where they're going to arrive <laughs> in the spirit world when they... My, my, my feelings are it's more important to know the truth about condition than not. So it's more important to understand what determines condition. Now, in the first sphere, fear dominates. So if you find in your own life that fear dominates your life, then it's likely you will arrive in the first sphere of the spirit world as well. Of course, anger is a subset of fear. So if you find that you are, have a, have a and I'm, I'm not talking about overt anger here. I'm talking about what's actually in your heart. So if in your heart there is frustration and annoyance quite frequently, then there is quite a degree of anger in your soul. Highly likely you will arrive in the first sphere of the spirit world while that is present. And other emotions? Shame. Now, persons who are in complete emotional denial also generally arrive in the first sphere. Right? So there are many men on the planet who believe themselves to be quite highly developed, but who are actually in denial of emotion, and therefore in denial of their own core existence, and they are often arriving in the first sphere as well. So you can see that the first sphere, the, the reason why most people arrive there is because these are the types of emotions that are truly within the soul, or they are in complete denial of their true condition. In fact, it's harder to help a person in that state than in this state. It's actually easier to help a person who is angry or afraid or ashamed than it is to help a person who's in complete intellectual denial of any of their emotions. This state is very, very difficult. It's almost like a soul-frozen state, and, um, and there are many people on earth passing in this state of denial. Um, in terms of helping them, it's also very difficult for spirits to help them as well, because they wish to hold on to their own beliefs and they're in complete denial of their true emotions. And so they're in complete denial of their true condition. Yeah. And this makes life very, very difficult for them for a long time in the spirit world before they are more humble and can start to feel some of these emotions inside of them. Yeah. By the time you reach the second sphere, you still have fear but fear no longer dominates your existence anymore. So from now on, the thing that dominates is your desire for truth. That now starts to dominate your, your condition. Now, it's not your desire for your own truth. It's your desire for the absolute truth that is true in here. There are many people in the first dimension who desire truth or think they desire truth but they're really just desiring their own truth. Here they start to desire the truth of the universe. How does the universe actually work? What's actually going on? What's really going on? Why am I really here? I think I'm here because of this, but what's my real reason why I'm in a certain location and so forth? Truth starts to dominate their perspective now. So you can see that's the reason why not many people arrive there, because most of us are in more of a fear, 
feeling, and our fear dominates our life. You remember the question I asked yesterday about are you doing exactly what you want to do? That's an indication about fear dominating life. As you, you can, now, very important to recognise whether you're a spirit or a person on earth, you can progress in the spirit world without returning to earth. Right? This is, when, when a lot of spirits hear this, they are often relieved. Because they had a terrible life on earth the first time, and many of them don't want to come back. And so they are relieved often that they don't have to come back. There's no need at all to come back no matter what condition you arrive in the spirit world. No need whatsoever to come back to earth. And in fact, the person in this condition cannot come back to earth. At all. Because they still have their spirit body attached to their soul, and it's a physical impossibility to stuff that spirit body into another spirit body. And so, which was what would they would need to be able to do to return. So it's actually a physical impossibility to return to Earth. And when you're in this condition, this condition, this condition, right, and, and right the way up to the soul union condition, it's impossible to come back to Earth. Right? And that's why I say nobody's come back to Earth historically, right? up until very, very recently. Okay. Now, that brings us questions of, all right then, why do so many people on earth believe in reincarnation, and what are the actual things that are actually happening? 